those first couple albums that can hang with any of the best funk groups of that time, including the JBs, Cool and the Gang. Yeah. They are right up there with the funkiness and the edge and the human music recommendation service. My name is Liam Flanagan and I'll be your musical guide, recommending you the best in music wherever and whenever it came from. You're currently watching our interview series where each month I interview a guest curator. These curators know music inside out and we'll be discussing top quality recommendations in depth. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to welcome Ben Falkman to Eclectic Selections. How are you, Ben? I'm doing very well, Liam. Thank you very much for having me. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you. And, and it's a pleasure to meet you all the way from Akron, Ohio. You got it. Yeah, it's the home of some fantastic music over the years, isn't it? So there's a Devo, Perubu. You went to high school with Dan Auerbach of the Black Keys, am I right? Firestone High School with Dan and Pat of the Black Keys. Oh, I'm Pat. There. Cool. Cool. Yes. So you are part of the Ill Style Rockers, who are a, a hip hop crew, a B Boy crew. I apologize if I get any of this pronunciation incorrect. Sure. Forrest, get em gum. Is that is correct. Anytime he was break dancing, they would say, get em gump, get em. So they right. caught him and they call him Forrest, get em gump. Cool. And he came along with Dre, met back in Ohio. At the time, Forrest had been in New living in New York City and dancing with the Rocksteady crew. Yeah, with the Rocksteady uh, crew, the legendary so I mean, Rocksteady crew. Yeah, yeah. He's, got, he's been around legends of the game, that's for sure. And then when he came back to Ohio, he met Dre, and then they started dancing together. And in about 1996, they officially started the Ill Style Rockers. And it was like seminal in Ohio. There really wasn't a break scene. So they started the whole scene, if you will, in, in, in the Akron in the Northeast Ohio right. area. Right, they were one of the early people out there in, in Ohio. Yep, absolutely. It's and interesting because about... one of the books actually behind me is like a, forgot the word now, an oral history of hip hop in New York and LA. And it shows you how it took like the best part of a decade for it to catch on in LA yep. up from New York. And then it obviously it take, takes more time again to get into the sort of the Midwest. Though, and the Absolutely. Yeah. It took a while to, to get to the Midwest. And when it hit, it was, uh, it was big. And Ohio had the scribble jam happening, uh, which was a pretty yeah, down there in uh, Cincinnati. What? Which is a huge thing. Another fun fact was the first B-Boy Jam in 1996. The first competition they had. He was the winner that, that first year. And then he and then Bobby Blaze, who's one of the other members, he won Rumble in the Bronx in New York in the same year. Yeah. So they started adding crew members, to Blaze and Dome. And we're talking like they were adding beatboxers and dancers and graph writers and they were trying to add all the to have all the elements of hip-hop in there these guys all went to my high school but they're all about 10 years older than me so right when they were all started starting their thing i was a little younger than they were and i met them about 10 years later doing a dj night at a local bar i reached out to them i said hey i like to play funk breaks you guys want to come out and listen to what i play they came out and that night they said you're now with us. Play Crazy Break. So they called me DJ Ben Crazy. That is my Ill Style Rockers DJ name. DJ ben and ever since then, I've been with them and they're like a family to me now. They absolutely shaped the way I am as a DJ. As I look at the culture, like they shaped who I was. They're, they're, they're absolutely a, a huge part in who I am today. That's very cool. Especially with them embracing you being the, the young generation. Because it's not all yeah, about you that. want it to keep going. So yeah, it's all about teaching the younger generation. And we're not scared, but I think it's about the sharing that keeps the culture going for sure. Definitely. It must be interesting to do that one-on-one -on -one because obviously there's a huge online community for hip hop. You can find all this information online, but it's a different experience to, to do it for real and to be doing it face-to-face -face with people 
Yeah, absolutely. I should say COVID put a damper on a lot of our jams because uh, just getting in small closed rooms with yeah. hundreds of people yeah. just wasn't a great idea during the uh, pandemic that we're still going through. So it's right. been it's been a few years since we've had a, an official Ill Style Rockers jam. We're hoping maybe this Christmas can be the first one in three years, but we want to be safe. We'll talk about songs by Rotary Connection. So they were a psychedelic soul group put together by Marshall Chess, the son of Chess Records founder Leonard Chess in 1966. This is when Chess was moving away from R&B and jazz. They wanted to do something more in tune with the times, which was all psychedelic rock, psychedelic pop music. So they listed Charles Step. He was the guy who created the Rotary Connection sound of it, and then went on to work with the next entry, actually. There's all these connections that I didn't plan on making, but not happening. The whole Chicago scene, sure. He was put in charge of it all, and you end up with this, this incredible covers record where none of the songs sound like the original. That's why I chose this album. First of all, I'll get into talking about Charles Stepney, who to me, uh, along with David Axelrod and a couple other guys, is like the greatest producer of all time, at least in my mind. The things that he was doing at chess, for instance, putting an electric guitar in a muddy water for the first time, where everyone looking at him going, this is the worst idea ever. They let him do it anyways. And the sound that came out of that album that he produced was fresh. And he's produced all these albums with lush string arrangements and big Baroque sounds and yeah. and the psychedelic instrumentation and even throwing in electronic stuff that had been groundbreaking at the time. So he was just cutting edge uh, on the sound that he was making. Yeah, because it is, it is almost like um, you've been given the keys to the studio and they've just been like, hey, just have at it. Do whatever. Charles Stepney while producing for chess had met all these amazing art including one of them was like Minnie ripperton then he said you got to hear this girl we got to she's got to be part of this group too so that's how she becomes part of the rotary connection also why i picked this is because of her voice and just her talent alone voice. the octaves she can hit and in fact in one of the songs that i think the song sunshine of your love she hits this pitch that is just inhuman it, 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 yeah. In fact, they, it, it's just amazing. I've heard her referred to as a, like a human theremin before, just because of the yes, it, just yeah, that's a good her. description. <laughs> it is that warbling, yeah. and it's very high pitched. Yeah, and this album, all the covers on this album, like you said, they just you would not recognize a song uh, until maybe the chorus or something. They're arranged completely different. They sound completely different. The, so the cover of Respect. Love. When Respect kicked in at the, the first time I listened through, I, I didn't realize it. I knew there was a couple of Respect on it, but I didn't realize that was it because they never used the chorus. You, once you realize, you start and put the lyrics together like, oh, holy cow, this is Aretha. What's going on? <laughs> These songs, this Rotary Connection just it, it, I missed their big break because they didn't get to play Woodstock. I guess they were supposed to perform, but they chose to go to a different festival which was like the difference in them being like someone that everyone knows and someone that only a handful of people music know. heads might know. Yeah, I also think it's interesting watching the Soul documentary last, what was it called? The Questlove documentary that came out last year about yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, and the Fifth Dimension were in that documentary. And I was like, who the, the hell are these guys? The Fifth Dimension had hit records and everyone thought like they were a bit nah. But... They're actually not a million miles away. I'd say they're slightly more grounded in. It, it, Absolutely. Than yeah. Voice, but it's still <laughs> not <laughs> miles from the Rotary Connection. So, yeah, maybe it was a case of missed opportunities rather than being willfully difficult. I think they're very listenable songs. Yeah, absolutely. But no, they don't necessarily have hooks. <laughs> No, they certainly... It stays with you, but I guess more in the way... I'm, I use these guys a couple of times in these videos as a reference, but it's always in the way that Radiohead song can be... Absolutely. ...with you, despite not necessarily being particularly accessible. 
Yeah, and it strikes you in some way, shape, or form. Charles Stepney was able to produce these like pop songs for like Earth, Wind, and Fire, as you find later, that did make crossed over hit. As far as the connection between Earth, Wind, and Fire and Charles Stepney and Chicago, is, it all has to do with chess and because Miss White, founder of Earth, Wind, and Fire, was a set musician for chess for yeah, many like, years um, uh, in the sixties. Albums, wrong sort of thing. He played on those albums. He played on Jackie Wilson's Higher and Higher on the track. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, he's played on Billy Stewart's I Do Love You. The list of songs he's plays on is pretty wild, and that's even before he got to the Ramsey Lewis trio. Because right. at the time, Ramsey Lewis, Young Holt were his drummer and bass player, and they went off to do Young Holt Unlimited, which they had their whole success doing that whole thing. And Ramsey said, well, I know this Maurice White guy. He's been drumming here forever, so he recruits Maurice White. He's on, I think, th three or four albums with Ramsey Lewis, taking around the world. And that experience that Maurice got with Ramsey Lewis was how he thought up Earth, Wind & Fire, because he was really trying to aim at a younger, audience whereas ramsey lewis was appealing to more of a middle-aged yeah or an older audience he really wanted to nail the younger scene the college scene the psychedelic stuff the funk that the younger kids were into yeah charles stepney even was there at the beginning of earth wind and fire because he had worked closely with maurice white through chess records and they had always talked about wanting to start a group with the elements as part of the title or as part of the whole th thing theme it's, um, it's such a and, and, thing, and they're such a sense yeah, this band. Yes. It's perfect. And the thing about Earth, Wind & Fire and Maurice White was he came from this background of gospel and soul, jazz, and R&B, and then he wanted to include all these elements of Latin and African and Brazilian and just everything and just roll it all up into one and the horn arrangements and everything on this first album which i pull out for you here yeah the horn struck me straight away that right? it just absolutely it smacks you around that i feel earth wood and fire in the mainstream eyes gets looked at as like, like a disco people yeah. remember like the september and the those later hits which is fine that's part of their career and part of their legacy but i really dig those first couple albums that were in fact kind of failures, if you will. Commercially though, it's really surprising because they recorded the Sweet Facts, but a song soundtrack, and that was quite popular. Bill. That was a big help in their career for sure. But then this comes along shortly afterwards and it does do anything. And then the next album after that, I think this, it's really it takes them three or four albums before they get going they replace most of the musicians by like the fourth or fifth album which is they have their first big crossover hit with charles stepney on one of those later albums but it's those first couple albums that can hang with any of the best funk groups of that time including the jb's cool and the gang yeah they are right up there with the funkiness and the edge and the sound these albums to me have always been like a rumor they exist, and this is a completely different version of the band. And then you throw this my way, and I'm like, oh, well, they do actually live up to that mystery and that hype. That's yeah. quite, it's quite a fantastic record. And you're right, it's very ambitious. He is trying to put a lot in there with the African influences from the song pianos. And I didn't actually, maybe a little bit of Latin. It shows through the first couple of albums. But then Rand and was known for bringing in some of those bits. So maybe that's something that, that he... For sure. I'm talking of Ramsey Lips, actually, there will be a link up here in the video to take you through to a recommendation on our Ko-fi, which is our like Patreon, and you can uh, get a recommendation there by Ramsey Lips. Not you, right, but right. we can if you want. <laughs> Just the viewers are on. Eventually, I'm going to create a graphic that smacks me around the face every time I do this. Shameless place. <laughs> thank you all for watching this video if you want to support eclectic selections and join our community there are various ways that you can do that 
Number one, you can like, comment, and subscribe right here on YouTube. This is this helps our video get noticed by the YouTube algorithm, and it helps other music lovers like you find great music. You can two follow us over on Twitter. Here you'll get the latest news, and you'll get extra recommendations. You'll be able to keep up to date with everything. Eclectic selections. You can join our Kofi, which is just like Patreon, so you can support us, and you'll get access to extra content like private playlists extra video recommendations from our guests all that good stuff and there's more coming in the future join our discord community where you can chat with other music lovers and myself about music and other subjects too all the links for all of that down in the description in our link tree thanks again for watching and until next thursday keep it eclectic